After watching this Elementor landing page design master class, you will be a real ninja of Elementor page builder. You can literally design anything in Elementor whatever you will imagine. You can replicate any design from scratch. You can make any advanced website from your client's provided designs. You will learn how to think and design like a professional web designer. This tutorial is 100% beginner friendly. You don't need to have any coding skill nor any design experience. So if you're very new to WordPress and Elementor, this one tutorial will make you a professional web designer. Also I have made everything in Elementor's latest Flexbox model. So you can also become an Elementor Flexbox expert by watching this tutorial. In this master class, we will not use any pre-made template and no paid theme is required. We will create everything from scratch step by step. Now let me introduce you to myself first, my name is Jim Fahad. I'm a professional web developer. I have done more than 1200 plus website projects for my clients. Even I have done more than 100 plus jobs on a freelancing marketplace with 5 star ratings. And in this tutorial, I will show you the exact way how I have been creating my clients websites. So you are basically learning from a real professional web developer. I'm really excited. If you're excited like me, please give this video a big thumbs up. This is the only thing I want from you. Other than that, this video is completely free for you. Let's now have a look at what we're going to make in this tutorial. I will show you how to put your logo on the left, how to add navigation hamburger menu here, also how to insert call to action button within the header. Then I will show you how to create this amazing mesh gradient hero banner with all this heading, paragraph, button. Also I will show you how to create cool overlapping images like this. Next I will show you how to create these beautiful curves, also how to add these card hover effects. Then how to create this beautiful features area where you can add more overlapping images. Then I will show you how to add this beautiful image boxes and how to add this cool skew hover effects like this. Then I will show you how to add this beautiful frequently asked question or FAQ area. Here we can see all the question and answers within this beautiful accordion. Then I will show you how to create this beautiful call to action area where we can add animated counters like this, also video on the right side. And of course I will show you how to create this beautiful footer menu, all the copyright text and social links here at the bottom of your page. Now let me show you another interesting thing. If you click on this hamburger icon, it opens up the flyout menu at the left side. And from the menu, if you click for example, I'm clicking on speakers it jumps us to the speakers area. Let's have another look. If I click here, the flyout menu opens. Then if I click on this booking, it takes us to the booking area. So I will also show you how to create these jump buttons very, very easily. Finally, I will show you how to make any website 100% responsive for mobile and tablet devices. All the hidden techniques in Elementor Flex container, everything in details, step by step. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, we will be creating our amazing landing page in easy 4 steps. First I will show you how to get your own domain name and web hosting. I will also provide you a 60% discount link. Then how to install WordPress. Then how to install a free theme and a free page builder. Finally we will start creating our amazing landing page. Also I will be adding a timestamp in the description so you can always jump into the necessary part you need. If you already have your domain name and web hosting, you can skip part 1. And if you have installed WordPress inside of your web hosting, you can skip part 2 as well. You can just jump to step number 3 by following the timestamp. Alright, let's now start with step number 1 which is to get your domain name and web hosting. So first of all, what is a domain name? Domain name is basically your website address like Facebook has Facebook.com, Amazon has Amazon.com, I have jimfahaddigital.com. Similarly for your website, you need an address that will be yourwebsitename.com. And what is web hosting? Web hosting is the storage space for your website. All the images, text you will have in your website all will be stored on your own web hosting. As you are owning your own web hosting, so there wouldn't be any limitation. You can run ads, you can upload any images or text. You can upload any themes or plugins you want. You are the in charge of your website. So let's now first get our domain name and web hosting. So first just click on the very first link in the description below this video or you can go to jimfahaddigital.com forward slash hosting. And this will take you to a special discounted Bluehost page. 
So why Bluehost? In my opinion, Bluehost is the best web hosting provider. I'm a web developer, I tried so many other web hosting companies, I don't want to mention their name, but I personally ended up using Bluehost. Hundreds of my clients using Bluehost and they never complain about using it. If you see my Bluehost account, I have hosted tons of websites here and I never get a downtime. Their customer support is really cooperative in case you need any help and their price is really affordable. That's why I always recommend Bluehost. So now click on get started. Here you can see their different plans. The main difference between them with the basic plan, you can host only one domain. You can take their plus or choice plus plan if you want to host unlimited domains. Also, you can take their pro plan if you have millions of visitors on your website already. I recommend starting with the basic plan. Then in future, you can upgrade that anytime. Now let's select the basic plan. Now we will select our domain name. If you already have a domain name that you want to use, you can just go ahead here on the right. But for now, I'm gonna get a new one. Now here, let's try for something like apple.com and click next. It says the domain apple.com cannot be used on Bluehost. Please try a different domain name. It should be because we cannot take that because we all know that's Apple's official website. So we will be typing our own domain name here. And also, if you click on the right side, you can see .site, .net, .info websites. I always recommend to take .com websites because it looks more professional and legit. So I'm gonna type here, let's say our elementor.com as we are going to make our website through Elementor page builder. And now click on next. It says our elementor.com is available. That's awesome. And here we need to put our account information. I'm putting mine here really fast only to not make you bored. Okay, here you can see the business name field. If you don't have a business, just keep it blank or put your full name. But here's the most important thing. That's your email address. Make sure you put your correct email address because after completing purchase, a receipt will be sent to that email address. So make sure you put your best email address here. All right, now scroll down. Here's the package information and it's automatically set to 36 months. And this is gonna be your cheapest plan. So yes, you're paying for 36 months upfront, but it comes out to only around $3.95 a month. So this is 50% off. That's gonna be your biggest discount. Now what I recommend is to just do 12 months. If you don't want to commit to the 36 months or 24 months, it's still 33% saving and it's only around $5.95 a month. And you also have your domain name for 12 months. So no more additional cost for your domain for these 12 months. And here you got package extras. First, here's the option for domain privacy. Having domain privacy is good. And I always recommend having domain privacy. So no one gets to know who is the owner of the website. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm deselecting this one. Let's click on turn it off. Because I don't want to hide myself at this moment. I want to be transparent. So if anyone knows I own this website, I have no problem. You can keep this one checked if you want. Not a big deal. I'm also deselecting all other options they're offering. We actually don't need that. They are just upselling their stuff. All right. Now you can see the price is now only $71.40 for the full year, including the domain. That's awesome. And I'm legally obligated to tell you that this is my affiliate link. So I do get a little bit of commission off of this, but it does save you a ton of money and it helps fund these free YouTube tutorials what I'm doing. So everybody wins. I really appreciate it. And here is the payment information. I'm putting my credit card number here, expiration date and CVV code. Then select this one here. 
so that you are agreed to their terms and policy. Now click on submit. It says your purchase was a success. Also, you can see here is your receipt. They will also send it to your email. I'm also waiting to get that email. Meantime, we can create our Bluehost account. So let's click on this create account button here. Here's the domain name that's automatically selected. Now let's create our password. Create a really strong password combining capital letters, numbers, special characters. You know how to make a strong password and then retype the password in the second field. Now check this once again that you have agreed with their terms and policy. Now click on create account. I already have received an email to confirm my purchase. So I'm opening my email. You will also get an email like this. Then click here, verify your email. It's very important. So it's now verified. Awesome. Now let's log in into our Bluehost account with the domain name and password we have just created. If you're logging in for the first time, you may see a pop-up like this. Like it says, let's create a website. Bluehost actually want to help you to make the website. Just click at the very bottom there. I'm not creating a website because I will be showing you everything step by step and skip all of these pop-ups because we don't need any of that. Cool. We have successfully registered our domain name and web hosting. Congratulations. So far, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. I will try my best to help you personally. So now we can move on to step number two, which is to install WordPress. And for some reason, if you logged out, then log in again. Now from left menu bar, click on my sites. Then you can click here, create site or here, create a WordPress site. I'm clicking here. Sometimes after clicking on my sites, you may see this my sites. From there, just click here on add site. Then you can see here two options. One is limitless customization and another one is fast, easy site building. As we will be creating our website using an amazing page builder, the Elementor page builder, that's why we will be selecting this option, the limitless customization. So just click here on get started. So let's now add a site name and site tagline. We can change that anytime. So I'm putting a site name Jim Fahad production and site tagline it deserved to be seen now let's click on advanced here you need to put your email address your username and password for your wordpress so i'm putting my email address here wordpress admin username i want to name it jim fahad and here let's put a password do you want to see my password i'm clicking here on show so it's abc123 i will of course show you how you can change it later so for now, click on next, close this browser pop up. Now it says where we want to install our WordPress. So make sure you keep this directory blank. And here is your domain name selected. And Bluehost here is suggesting some free plugins, but we don't need that. Let's deselect this all. Now click next. Awesome. It says WordPress installed successfully. Now you can copy this information right here and save that somewhere on your computer where you can access it again later and click here to show your password. Actually, I intentionally gave this an easy password that's ABC123. Never ever use this kind of easy password. I'm showing you shortly how you can change that password. We can now sign into WordPress by clicking here, but this is not the usual way because all the time you cannot log in this way. I mean, from this page, this button, right? So you should get used to signing into WordPress all the time is by going up to a new window and typing in your domain name forward slash WP dash admin. So I'm typing here my domain name ourelementor.com forward slash WP dash admin and click enter. So we can see our WordPress login page here. That means WordPress has installed successfully. 
Sometimes it takes 30 minutes to 24 hours to process this installation and this process is called propagation. It basically has to let everyone know that hey this new domain name now exists and registered. But we can see our website instantly. They actually say it might take 30 minutes to 24 hours but I've been using Bluehost for more than 10 years. I always get domain live immediately. Actually that's another reason why I love Bluehost. So now you know that your domain name is working. So go ahead and I'm um, just gonna type in my name which was the user that I created and I'm gonna type that easy password abc123. You can click this eye icon to show it. Now let's click on login. So right now we are inside WordPress admin panel or WordPress dashboard. I will make you familiar with all of this. But now before doing any other thing, I just want to clean up my WordPress dashboard because personally I love to work in a clean environment. So let's close all these notifications. So I'm closing these, closing this one. Also, let's minimize this one by one or you can do another thing. From top, just click on screen options and you can just deselect one by one like this. So all them will be minimized like this. Let's also minimize this. So we just need to deselect this one. Now click on screen options. Then I wanna clean up my WordPress dashboard more. So let's go to plugins to all plugins or installed plugins. Here we can see all the plugins. Actually all these are came with default WordPress installation. So you can select these plugins one by one like this or you can select all of them by just checking here. And from bulk action, I'm clicking on deactivate first. Now click on apply. And then as I want to delete all of them, so I'm selecting all of them together. Now from bulk action, I'm clicking on delete then click on apply. The browser pop-up says I'm sure or not. Yes, I'm sure. So click on OK. Now all the unnecessary plugin has been deleted. Then I want to clean up more. So let's go to pages to all pages. And here we can see some dummy pages. I also don't want them. So I'm selecting them together like this. And from bulk action, I'm clicking on move to trash, then click on apply. All right, the next thing I want to show you, you may remember we have given a very easy password that was ABC123. So let's now change the password. So to do it from here, hover over on users from there, let's go to profile. So here you can play with the color scheme if you want. For example, you can make it light or you can make it modern. Actually, it doesn't matter because only you can see it. This is the color scheme of your WordPress dashboard. So I just want to keep it to default and then let's scroll down from here you can change your first name last name or your email address also if you want you can change your profile picture but here i just wanna change my password so from under account management it says new password so i'm clicking on set new password if you want you can keep this strong password what wordpress is suggesting but i don't wanna use it so first of all i'm just clicking on hide so you cannot see my password here i'm just typing a very strong password Though it says medium, but I'm happy with it. So let's scroll down and click on update profile. Then I just want to do another basic settings. So from here, hover on settings. From there, click on permalinks. And here sometime you may see it's set to plain or DN name mode or any other. But personally, I always suggest to keep it on post name like this. So select post name. Let's scroll down and click on save changes then next i want to install our theme so to install the theme from left bar hover on appearance from there go to themes so themes are basically the look and feel of your website so here we can see some default theme that actually came with default wordpress installation but i don't want to use any of them i want to use a very lightweight theme so to install that from here i'm just clicking on this big add new theme button so you can choose any theme which is available here. Also, you can search the theme name from this search bar. So here I'm searching for Hello Elementor. So here it appears. It says Hello Elementor. Just click on install to install it. And then click on activate to activate Hello Elementor theme. 
all right next i want to install our free page builder which is elementor page builder and before installing the elementor page builder we need to create an account on elementor so to create a free elementor account you can just go to jimmyfahaddigital.com i will put this pages link in the description so from that page from under this important links you can just click here it says get elementor free account so i'm clicking here by the way it will take you to the pro page of the elementor so actually elementor has its pro version and i really really like its pro version so if you want you can purchase any of them but in this particular tutorial i won't be using elementor pro i just wanna use the free version of elementor page builder so here i just wanna create a free account to create that you can click here at the top to log in and then it's asking for logging in here but first of all you need to create an account so from top click on create an account now from this register page you just need to put your email address then give your password and just click on create my account so your free elementary account would be created i already have my account so i'm not doing anything here you just need to create your account in this place all right just after that i'm closing this tab now let's go back inside WordPress admin panel here. Now I just want to install Elementor Page Builder plugin. To do it from left side hover on Elementor plugins, not Elementor plugins, just hover on plugins from there, click on add new. And here on the search bar, I'm searching for Elementor. And here it says Elementor Website Builder. This is the plugin, just click on install now and then click on activate to activate the page builder plugin and actually i don't wanna take this survey so you can just skip it from top right corner i'm clicking on this x also let's minimize it you can open the screen options and from here i'm just deselecting the elementor overview option let's minimize the screen options now i just wanna do a little bit elementor settings so to do it let's just hover on elementor from there let's go to settings and here you know like i said in the beginning we wanna use the elementor flex container this is the latest technology so actually by using elementor latest flex container technology we can create any type of layout you can see that during the creation of the landing page okay so for now we need to turn on the flex container for that here go under features and scroll down it says flexbox container just make it to active then scroll down and click on save changes all right now i just wanna create a page to create a page from left side hover on pages from there click on add new so here first i just want to close this pop-up and at this moment we can see this dashboard in full screen mode but i don't want that so from the top right corner click on this vertical three dots from here i'm just turning off the full screen mode okay so you can see the bar at the left side this is more comfortable for me so now we just need to give a title of this page so here it says add title i just wanna name it awesome landing page now from the top right corner click on publish then click one more time on this publish button and this time you know we want to create our landing page using elementor page builder so from top click on this button says edit with elementor now we can see a pop-up actually elementor just released its ai but i don't want to use it at this moment so from top i'm just clicking on this x also i'm closing the navigator all right so we're now inside elementor page builder here's the fun part begin and elementor is super easy to understand because it's self-explanatory and now before doing any other thing i just wanna hide this header and footer so this header and footer these are coming basically from hello elementor theme but i don't wanna use them so to disable them to disable the header and footer i'm just clicking on this gear icon let's scroll down and from here i'm just setting the page layout to elementor canvas so the header and footer wouldn't be getting from the theme you see we can now only see the canvas and to save these settings from here i'm just clicking on this update button also from top i'm clicking on got it so the notification would go away 
So here, let me just tell you the basic or the fundamental of Elementor. Here at the left side, all these elements or all these widgets, these are basically Elementor elements or Elementor widgets. Like here you can see heading element, here is the image element, here is the video element, here is the text editor element. So in this way, if you scroll down, you will find more elements and also here we can see some pro elements. Only if you purchase Elementor Pro, you can access to these elements or widgets. But other than that, if I scroll down, you will find more free widgets like image box, icon box, image carousel, icon list, all these. Okay, so whenever you want to create anything on a web page, you need to drag this element from left side to the right canvas here. For example, if you want to add any heading, you just need to drag this heading element from left side to the right canvas in this place. So here we can see the text. If you want to change the text, you just need to write here within this field. So for example, here I'm just typing Jim Fahad Digital. You see the text has been instantly changed. You can also set its alignment to centered, right aligned or left aligned. Okay, I'm just keeping it to centered. Now then, if you want to change its styling, you just need to go under its style tab. From here, you can change the color from this color picker. So just open this color picker. From here, you can change this color. Also, you can drag this bar so you can find the different color panel. Like here, I'm just making it to reddish like this. And then if you want, you can also play with its typography. Just open this pencil icon. I mean, click on this pencil icon. From here, you can change the font family. If I click on this family, you will find all these Google fonts. For example, if I just select this font, you see it's instantly changed here. Also, if you want to play with its size from here, you just need to drag this bar to the right side. You see the font size is started increasing here. So in this way, you can increase or decrease the font size. Also, I just want to change this font to Poppins font because Poppins is one of my favorite fonts. Let's make it a bit smaller. Also, if you want, you can play with the weight so you can make it super bold or you can make it super light like this and then you can make it all uppercase or all lowercase or capitalize then you can play with its styling like normal or italic like this so here you can play with all the typography options and then if we go under advanced tab here you can see all the spacing options like margin and padding now let's say if you want to add some space at the bottom of this heading then from here we can see the padding first of all i'm just unlinking it so let's click here and like i said i want to add some space at the bottom so here at the bottom i'm adding 20 pixel of space or padding so here 20 pixel of space has been added underneath this heading widget so not only with this heading for example i'm just clicking on this rubik's cube icon so here we can again see all these widgets if i just drag here this button widget for example so underneath the heading i'm dragging here the button widget you can find all these three options like here's the content option here is the style option and here is the advanced option. So if I just go under content option, from here you can change the text of this button. For example, here instead of click here, I just want it to say contact now. Then you can set the alignment to centered like this. So you can set all the layout staff or text changing staff from under this content tab. If you want to do some styling with this button, you just need to go under its style tab. So from here, you can change the background color. For example, I'm just making it to black. Then here, if you want, you can play with the text color or hover color. For example, you can see this background color. I mean, this button's background color is now black. But on hover, if you want to change the background color to, for example, red. So just have a look. Right now, the button color is black. If I hover on the button, it now becomes red. So in this way, you can do all the styling stuff from under this style tab. Now, if I go under advanced tab, you see here is the margin and padding. That means you can do all the spacing stuff around this button from underneath this advanced tab. So no matter which widget you take, for example, if you take any of this widget or element, 
you will find those three options so if i select the heading you will find this content style and advanced tab if you select the button you will also find the content style and advanced tab so you already understand how it works we just need to drag the elements from left side to the right side then we can do the styling we can add the spacing like that so let's create our beautiful banner first so first of all i just wanna delete all of them which i have created only to give you the example so from top i'm clicking on this x to delete this dummy area also i'm clicking here on this update button to save this empty canvas all right so let's now first create our beautiful banner or the hero banner okay so previously i have shown you how to drag the element from left side to the right side but before dragging any element from left side to the right canvas first of all we just need to create the structure okay so first i'm clicking here on this plus icon you can take any of this structure so to create our banner i will be taking this two container structure so i'm selecting this one and here with this container you will find all the settings or options to the left side and first of all i just want to set the align items to centered i will explain you later why am i making this align items to centered now with this container i want to add a background color so let's go under style tab from here open the background type just click on this pencil icon from here open the color picker and you can select the color just by hovering or dragging these color codes or you can just manually type the color code within this field so i'm just putting here hash f2 f0 ef you see it's kind of gray color and now over this background color i mean over this gray color i wanna use an overlay okay so to add that overlay i'm just clicking here on this background overlay now let's select this classic icon and from this place i'm just clicking on this choose image or this plus icon now let's click here on upload files and then click on select files so now from my computer i'm selecting this image it says shapes hero banner image so click on open by the way if you wanna get all the images what i'm using in this tutorial you can just go to jimfahaddigital.com like i said i will put this pages link in the description from that page from under important links if you just click here on download the images i have used in the tutorial you will get all the images download link so you can follow along with the tutorial properly okay let's now go back inside elementor page builder so we have uploaded this image now click on select so here you can also play with the position for example you can make it to sender sender or if you want you can make it to sender right like this but i just wanna set it to top right and also i don't want this image to be repeated so from here i'm just making the repeat value to no repeat and here opacity i just wanna make it to one so it's no more transparent it's just this solid color i mean this solid gradient color all right now i wanna add some spacing at the top and bottom of this container so select this container and you know to select this container you just need to click on the six dots i'm clicking here now from left side let's go under advanced tab like i said i wanna add some space at the top and bottom so first i'm just unlinking it and here at the top i wanna add 200 pixel and at the bottom i'm adding 100 pixel of padding and also at the left and right i'm adding 15 pixel of padding so basically this is our main parent container and within this container we have got two inner containers this one is the left container and this one is the right container so here i just wanna make this left container comparatively bigger so first of all i'm just selecting this left container and here instead of 50 percent i just wanna make it with 255 percent and the right ones with i just wanna make it to 45 percent so right containers with is 45 percent and the left containers with is 55 percent here within the left container i wanna add a heading first so you can click on this plus icon and from left i'm dragging this heading element inside of here 
then i just wanna say here this grow your skills to advance your career path now to change its color just go under style tab from here open this color picker and the color code would be hash 242527 then let's open the typography so from here first of all i'm just making it to poppins let's select poppins and i wanna make its size really really big so from here i'm just making its size to 70 pixel or i wanna make it more bigger so i'm making it to 76 pixel but at this moment it seems kind of bold so i just want to reduce it so from here font weight i'm making it to 500 and i want to increase the line height actually line height is the space in between of these lines so from here i'm just increasing the line height like this let's increase it more we can just keep it to 80 or 85 pixel like this then underneath this heading i wanna add a paragraph so from top click on this rubik's cube icon from here i just drag this text editor widget underneath this heading here so also i wanna paste some dummy text within this left field let's just paste the text then i wanna change the color of this paragraph just go under style tab from here first let's open the color picker so its color code would be hash 242527 and then i just want to drag this bottom bar to the left side so it would be a bit transparent like this all right let's now do some typography from this place so first of all i'm setting its font family to enter this one let's select it then font size let's make it to 16 pixel or we can increase 2 pixel more so i'm making it to 18 pixel and also the default weight 400 is fine now here i want to show you another thing you see this is our left container this one and within the left container here is the first element is the heading then the second element is this paragraph or the text editor now i want to increase the space in between of these two element so to do it you can just select this left container this one now let's scroll down and here it says gap between elements by default it's 20 pixel but let's say if you want to increase it to 30 pixel you see the space has been increased but instead of 30 i want to increase it to more so here i'm just making it to 40 pixel now underneath this paragraph here i want to take another container so let's click on this rubik's cube icon and here i'm dragging this container underneath this paragraph here in this place so basically this container is within the left container here i mean this left container is the parent container of this container what we have just taken now here within this inner container i want to take a button so let's click on this plus icon from here i'm just dragging this button widget inside here and instead of click here i just want it to say book your seat now then let's do a bit of styling with this button so go under style tab from here first open the typography because i want to set its font family to enter and then i'm making its font size to 16 pixel also let's increase the font weight to 600 and let's click outside then here's the option for this background color so here instead of this green color i just want to put here hash f57950 and on the hover so let's go under hover tab on hover i want to change the background color to hash 222222 so it's basically kind of dark color so initially the button is looking like it and if i hover here you see it's changing to that black color then i wanna make these corners more rounded so from here let's just make the border radius to 10 pixel actually 10 pixel is too much so i'm reducing it to 8 pixel and then let's add some padding inside of this button so from left side first of all i'm just unlinking it so now you can see all the padding becomes zero now here at the top i'm making it to 16 also at the bottom it's 16 and then on the left and right i'm making it 24 pixel of padding 
all right now right after this button i wanna add a icon list so from here click on this rubik's cube icon and here i'm searching for icon list here we go just drag this icon list right after this button here and actually with this icon list i just wanna keep one so one icon with this text so i'm removing these two let's just delete it also let's delete this one and now instead of this list item hash one i want to change this content so click over there and first i'm changing this icon so let's select it from this place you can select any of the icons but i just wanna use this field check icon so this check circle i'm selecting it click on insert and then instead of this list item one i just wanna put a date so it would be a random date i'm just writing here 7 october 2023 all right let's now do some styling with this icon list so i'm going under style tab so first let's open the icon and here i'm making this icon color to the hash 242527 it's the same black color we have used with this heading and then the default size 14 is fine so here let's open the text and here I also wanna keep the text color to the same hash 242527 and then from here let's do some typography stuff with this list item so from the typography I'm just making the font family to enter let's select it I'm making the font size to 16 pixel and here I'm making the font weight to 600 perfect but here I wanna do another thing I want this icon list at the right side of this button here in this place, not underneath of this button. So to do it, you see their parent container is this one. So let's select this container. And here the default direction is set to this column structure. I mean this column structured container, but I don't want to keep this column directed container. I'm just making it to the horizontal or row directed container. So I'm selecting this one. So now all the inner elements of this container becomes horizontally one after another like this. And then I wanna make all these elements or all these items vertically centered. You see this text is at the top of this area. So I wanna keep them vertically centered here. So from this place, I'm making the align items to centered. You see now within this parent container, all the elements are vertically centered and also i want to increase the space in between of these two elements so from here you already know about it it's gap so instead of default 20 i'm making it to 30 pixel now just like this container i want to take another container right after these so click on this rubik's cube icon let's drag this container underneath this container here in this place so within this container i wanna take some elements first of all i wanna take an image okay before taking anything you know my goal is the same because i wanna take two elements one after another horizontally like this so to do it let's select this container and i'm making the direction to row based and also i'm setting the align items to centered so here first i'm adding an image click on the plus icon and here i'm dragging the image element in this place let's now click here on choose image to select the image go to upload files click on select files and here i'm just selecting this people image click on open click on select so here is the image and now after the image here i wanna use some text so click on the rubik's cube icon and here i'm dragging this text editor widget in this place also now instead of this i just wanna say 240 people then i wanna add a line break so i'm just pressing shift enter and here i want it to say already registered and here i just wanna make these 240 people bold so from left side let's just select these 240 people this text and from here just click on this b icon so it would be bolded 
all right so we have done all the work within the lift container by the way to not make you confused i just wanna describing here everything once again at the top we can see this is the main parent container within that this one is the left container and this one is the right container now within the left container here we have got this heading this paragraph and here we have taken another inner container and underneath that here we have got another container so actually not to make you confused i'm just opening the navigator so you can just right click over anywhere and you can just open the navigator so here if you just have a look within the navigator you can see everything properly okay first of all i'm minimizing all these just by clicking here at the top left just click one more time so everything is now minimized so at this moment we can see this main parent container and i just wanna rename it to our hero banner now within this hero banner container let's just open it we have got two container so this one this one is basically this left container so i'm just renaming it to left container and underneath that this one is the right container i mean this one so i'm just renaming it to right container okay so let's start from the left container so this one let's open this container here at the top we can see this heading here is the text editor and here is this parent container so we can just renaming it to inner container also here we have got another inner container so i'm renaming it to inner container so within the first inner container let's open it we can see the button that's basically this button and here you can see an icon list this is it and within this second inner container let's open it we can see this image so here's the image and here's the text editor widget now we will be adding elements within the right container so from here we can see the right container so we can see the right container is highlighted in gray color so if you lost anywhere within the page the navigator would be your lifesaver all right so for the moment i'm just closing the navigator let's just close it so here within the right container click on this plus icon here i just want to add some image so first let's drag this image now underneath it here i wanna add another image so click on the rubik's cube icon here i'm dragging this image widget also right after that here i'm adding another image here in this place so we will be adding three images here so let's first start with the first image i'm clicking on the first image from left side click on choose image go to upload files click on select files and here for the first image i'm selecting this hero banner image so i'm selecting it click on open let's select it and here we go we can see the image here in this place let's now select the second image from the left side choose the image go to upload files click on select files so from here i'm selecting this image hero banner image 2 open it select it and for the third one let's select it let's click on choose image go to upload files click on select files and from here i'm selecting this third image of the hero banner click on open then click on select so here my goal is to make this image position at this place in this area and i wanna place the third image here at this place so to make it happen we need to make the second and third images position to absolute okay so here i'm starting with the second image let's select it first of all actually i just want to reduce its width a little bit so go under the style tab from here by default it's set to percentage but instead of percent i'm making it to pixel and now if you want you can increase or decrease the image size but i just want to keep it 265 pixel and then like i said i just want to place this image at this area here over the first image so to do it make sure we have selected the second image go under its advanced tab from this place i'm making its position to absolute so here at this moment we can see it's placed here at the top left side 
but I wanted to place it here in this position. So to do it, let's now scroll down. Here first I wanna set the horizontal orientation from right side. So here you can set the offset, Just you can just play with it like you can drag it to the right side to make its position. In this place you can move it to the left. So you can basically play with it to select the position. And I'm just keeping it to negative 62 pixel. And from here you see it says vertical orientation. So if you play with these bar, you can set its position vertically from top to bottom. I just wanna keep it here in this place. So we can just keep it to 85 pixel at this position. And here then let's select this image. This is the third image, let's select it. Now go under the style tab. Similar like the second image, I'm making it in pixel. Also I'm making its width to 265 pixel. Now go under the advanced tab. From here, similarly I'm making its position to absolute. And let's make its position in this area. So to do it, first of all the horizontal orientation. So let's just keep it from left and here I'm just setting it to negative 40 like this and the vertical orientation is from top by the way if you want you can also set it from bottom like this but I want to keep it from top and here I'm making the offset like this so we can just keep it to 260 pixel right now it seems perfect so far whatever we have done to save our all the work don't forget to click on this update button by the way there is a little problem with this container if you have a look if i now just scroll this browser to the right side we can see an empty space to the right side because you see we have set some images position to the absolute position that's why this white space has been created so if you want to get rid of this space all you need to do just scroll up select this main parent container go to its layout tab let's scroll down from here open the additional options here just select the overflow value to hidden instead of auto because auto is the default value so here i'm making the overflow value to hidden so here if we now try to go to the right side of the browser we cannot go there so that white empty space has been gone all right and here like i said the poppins font is one of my favorite fonts but here i wanna use another font just select it and from the typography let's open the font family actually here all the fonts we can see all these are google fonts so if you want you can use any other fonts like this Quantico font or let's browse through other so let's say if you want you can select this Redley font but actually I don't wanna use any of this Google font with this heading and also with other headings so I wanna use a non Google font and the font name is Clash Display Font so if we just google the clash display font clash display font and let's now hit enter because i just want to download the font first so here on the google search result we can see this is the fontshare.com and here's the clash display font let's go inside like i said here my goal is to download the font first then i will show you how to use that within elementor page builder okay so to download the clash display font let's scroll down and here we can see view family just click there then if you scroll down you can see all the variation like super light regular medium all these i will be using the medium font okay so let's scroll up and here just click on download family yep from here just click on download family so it's downloaded on my computer so let's just open that folder here within images basically we have downloaded this zip file so first of all i'm unzipping the file and now within this folder let's go within the folder here within this fonts folder first of all let's go inside web folder later we will also need the otf file but first of all let's go inside the web folder and here let's go inside fonts 
here you can see they have given us so many variations like here we can see the bold version of class display font and here is the extra light here is the light font here is the medium font here is the regular font here is the semi bold font but like i said i don't want to use the light or bold i just want to use the medium font and here with the medium one you can see the different variations like here we can see class display medium ttf file then here eot formatted file here woff formatted file here woff2 formatted file actually we will be needing all of these formatted files okay i'm showing you very shortly how to use that so first of all let's go back inside elementor page builder for the moment let's just save the work so click on this update button and i want to go back to our wordpress dashboard so click on this hamburger icon then click on exit and here yep let's keep these settings and click on apply then click on browser leave all right like i said within the elementor page builder we don't wanna use the google fonts on some headings so i wanna use the custom font and to do that first of all we need to install a plugin just go inside plugins now click on add new and here i'm searching for custom font now here i wanna use this plugin it says custom fonts and it's by brainstorm force so click on install now and then click on activate so the custom fonts plugin has been installed and activated perfectly now first of all just hover on appearance from there let's go to custom fonts and here we need to give this font a name actually its name is clash display but if you want you can give any name okay so here i just wanna name it clash display oops not classic it would be clash display then here you need to set a font fallback so for some reason if the clash display font don't get the fallback font would be shown so here i'm just putting here arial or you can just write here poppins or any other font so i'm just keeping it arial okay now let's scroll down from here you can select the font width so here like i said i want to use the medium one so i'm setting it to medium 500 and for the medium one i want to upload the file of the font so like you already have seen we need to upload different type of files for this specific font but the base format is the ttf format so here first i'm uploading the ttf file just click on upload go to upload files click on select files and here within the folder we have just downloaded and you may remember we have just unzipped it so within the folder let's go inside fonts now go inside web and here within the fonts folder like i said i won't be using the bold not the extra light or light i just wanna use the regular font and here actually i wanna upload all the files of this regular font so the ttf wf because we will be needing all of them so i'm uploading them together so here not the regular i wanna use the medium one so here is the mediums ttf file i'm selecting it here i'm selecting the eot formatted medium here is the wf formatted medium here is the wf formatted i mean wf2 formatted medium fonts so i've selected all them together and let's now click on open so now here as i'm uploading the ttf format so let's select the ttf formatted medium clash display font here now click on select and here for the dot wff click on upload and here is the wff format let's select it here is the wff2 so here is the wff2 just select it and also here is the otf option so click on upload and here we cannot see the otf so let's go to upload files click on select files now again from inside this clash display folder let's go inside fonts and here instead of the web now we need to go inside of otf and you know i just want to use the medium one so i'm selecting medium let's open it and here medium is selected just click on select and here is the fonts for eot format just click on upload 
and we already have uploaded the EOT format so select it and click on select. By the way, there is another new format that is SVG but actually we don't have SVG version and it's not mandatory but if you have SVG format that's great but if you don't have it there is no problem. Basically you just need this .ttf format. It will basically support more than 90% of the browsers but if you support the other formats like WFF or WFF2 then EOT format then the OTF format then your site or your font is 100% I mean this font would be 100% supported on all browsers. So basically these different formats are to support this font on different browsers and different devices. Okay. So let's scroll down and click on add new font. All right, we can now go inside Elementor page builder. So pages to all pages. And here we can see our awesome landing page. So here, let's just click on edit with Elementor. I have opened it on a new browser. So here, I wanted to change the font of this heading. So let's just select it. Go under the style tab from here, open the typography and here let's now select the font family let's now scroll to the very top of the fonts here you see under custom we can see a new font name that we have just activated which is clash display so i'm selecting clash display and here we go we can see our beautiful clash display font here instantly now to save our work click on this update button so we have created our beautiful hero banner in this way, I mean step by step. Next I will be creating the second section or second container of this page. But before doing that, I wanna introduce you to kitpapa.com. Because here you see we have been creating everything step by step and it's really time consuming. But let's say if you don't have enough time and you don't want to create everything step by step then kitpapa.com is the perfect place for you. Because here you will find all the ready WordPress templates and you can use all these template kits for yourself or for your clients. You will find different types of templates or different type of website niches template here. For example, if you're looking for any web template for your business or portfolio or service business. Or let's say restaurant or any medical or fitness website you will find all those kits on kitpapa.com so for example if you have got a client and that client needs a website for their restaurant you can just go to the restaurant category from the left side so from here you can just click on food and restaurant and here you can see all the restaurant kits so i'm just clicking here on the first one you can see all the details of this ready kit. If you scroll down, you can see all the description about this kit, what pages you will get like home page, about page, menu page, blog page, all these. And another interesting thing is you will get an installation guide with the kit. I mean, if you purchase the kit from this place, then you don't need to do anything like you don't need to follow this whole process everything on step by step you just can go to the product page then if you scroll down you just need to open the video guide from this place you see it's only three minute long so by following this process or following the installation guide you can make this website live on your client's website instantly also if you want to preview the website so if you want to know how it would look on real website you just need to click here on live demo so you can preview the whole website here within this preview pop-up so here if you convinced or if you think this is the best website for your restaurant you can just purchase it and you can use it on your website also you can check the responsiveness of the website from top if you click on this tab icon you can see the tablet view of the website if you click on the mobile device you can check how it's looking on mobile devices so not only restaurant category if you go back to home page you see you can find different ready website kits here on kitpapa.com for example here we are creating a webinar landing page if you go to kitpapa and if i search here the name which is webby let's search it so here is the kit actually it's not kit it's the template so let's go inside the single page of this template kit so let's say if you just don't want to follow along this whole process if you just want to instantly get this whole page layout 
then you can just purchase this template from kitpapa.com you see you can see the live preview of the page here in this place so everything is showing perfectly all right let's click outside also you don't need to follow this whole step by step process from this product page if you scroll down you will find the video guide so if you just play it you see it's only around 1 minute and 40 seconds so within 1 minute and 40 seconds your page will be live on your website all right so in this particular tutorial actually i want to create everything from scratch so let's just close it and we are now back within elementor page builder we have already created our hero banner now underneath here i want to create the second section but before that here i want you to understand something so first of all here i'm just dragging this heading and for example here i wanted to say this is our amazing heading and then underneath here i'm just dragging this text editor so it's a paragraph and then for example here i'm dragging a button widget here underneath and right after that here i'm just dragging another heading and let's drag another heading right underneath here the last one i want to make it a bit smaller so from here i'm making it h5 so actually i have just dragged here some random element because i want to understand something here so if you have a look within this banner area you see i have changed the font family the color of this heading here now here i have taken another heading so let's say we have one hundreds of headings within our website and we have given the color to blue then after one week we have changed our brand color so we want to change all the blue color to the red color so we need to change all the colors manually one by one but actually i don't want to do that that's why i need to set a global color so let's say if we have got 100 headlines on our website if we change the color from one place all the headings color will be changed so to do it we need to set up our global settings and not only the color we can also change the font family the font weight the font size so we can set everything globally so if we just change it from one place it will be automatically changed on the whole website with all other same elements so here for the moment i'm just clicking on this update button and let's now do the global settings so to do the global settings from top left click on this hamburger icon and here i'm just going inside site settings now here first of all i just want to set some global colors first so click on global colors and here we can see the default blue color instead of that i want to use the black color so let's select the color picker and here i want to put hash 242527 you see all this headings color has been changed instantly and then we can keep the secondary color the way it is but i want to change the text color so from here i'm just making it to the same 242527 but i just want to reduce the transparency so here i'm dragging it to the left side you see at the same time this color and this color is started changing at the same moment this is how interesting the global settings are okay so here i'm just dragging it to this place like this then also i want to change this accent color so let's say if we create any button or any icon that won't get this green color that all will get our branding accent color so in this case that is this orangish color okay so i'm just clicking here and the accent color would be hash a57950 and also without this four if you want you can add as many color you want you just need to click here on this add color button and you can give the color any name so here i just want to add an off-white color i'm just naming it off white and the color code would be hash f2 f0 ef so like i said it would be off-white color so we have set some global colors let's now go back and here i want to set some global fonts so go inside global fonts and here the primary font let's select the pencil icon 
I want to make the global font as our global clash display font. So here I'm searching for clash display. This one, this is our custom font and I'm making the font size to 48 pixel. And also I'm making the font weight to 500. And then here's the secondary font and I just want to make it to inter font this one let's make the font size to 18 pixel default 400 weight is fine so next the text font here i wanna use the same inter oops i'm just searching here inter font so let's select the inter and here i'm making the font size to 16 pixel and the last font the accent font here i'm making its font to the same inter font and then font size let's make it to 16 and here I want to make the font weight to 600, which is semi bold. All right, let's now go back. Okay, before going back, you know, like the color, if you want to set any custom style, you can just click here on this add style button and you can add as many styles you want. So here I'm happy with this for styling. Let's now go back. And here I'm now going inside of this typography. Now, first of all, I want to set the global text color. Okay. So first of all, if you want to use this color picker, you can use the color from this place. For example, you can select the red color or for example, you can use this blue color. But instead of that, I want to use the text color globally. So from these custom colors, I want to use our global text color, but we can see these are our old global colors so let's just check it double time so we can go back and if we now go inside global colors we can see this color changed but we just need to save it and if we refresh the page the color will get so for the moment if you see any situation like this just save it for the moment and from top i need to refresh the page okay so from here again let's now go inside typography here now have a look if we just click on this globe icon so here we can see all the global colors we have just set so on the text i just want to use this global text color and then with the typography i want to use our global text typography so basically if we scroll down you see these are getting from the global typography also the global color is getting from this place then if we take any paragraph a uh, space has been added at the bottom of that paragraph but i don't want that default space so from here i'm making the paragraph spacing zero globally with all the paragraphs so there is no longer extra space underneath the paragraph then i want to keep everything same all the h1 tag h2 h3 everything i want to keep the default but here only with the h2 I just want to set the typography globally so from here I'm just selecting the primary so it would be the primary typography so this is all within the typography option let's now go back now here I just want to show you another thing if I go inside this layout option here here you see there is an option it says content width so by default elementor's content width is 1140 pixel but if you want to change it you can change it from here so you can control everything from this place but i just want to keep the default 1140 pixel content width and also by default all container gets some padding so i don't wanna add that padding by default so from here from this place i'm making the default container padding to zero so far all the settings are good so for the moment let's just click on this update button to save our work now from top let's go back by the way you may see this heading size is kind of smaller at this moment actually if i now just refresh the page it will be solved automatically so sometimes it happens within elementor page builder so don't get panicked about that okay so from top let's now go back and actually at this point it's showing some random thing so i think we just need to refresh the page to resolve it all so let's just refresh it actually it happens sometimes you see after refreshing everything is now looking great also this font got its previous size 
okay so here before creating the second section i want to show you some other thing so if i just click on this hamburger icon from here you can just go inside user preferences and here ui theme for example right now i'm using the light theme so if you want you can set it to the dark mode but i just want to keep it light for the moment also here you can set the panel width panel is basically this left portion where you are getting all these elementors option so if you want instead of 300 you can increase the panel width so it's now looking bigger but i just want to keep the default 300 pixel of panel width and then we can keep all these options the way it is and yep i just wanna turn on this editing handles option because let's say if you wanna just duplicate this area all you need to do you need to right click over here then you will find all these options like duplicate or copy all these options okay but here i wanna show you the short cut away so you just need to click on this hamburger icon now let's go inside user preferences from here you just need to turn on the editing handles option now have a look if you just hover on any elements you will get these shortcut editing options like duplicating that content or deleting that content it's really very handy all right now to save all these settings just click on this update button and i promise i don't wanna make you more bored because all other settings has been done we just need to create the next sections step by step so like i said we have taken all these elements only to the experiment purpose to show you how the global fonts and global colors works so right now you are comfortable with all of this so we can just delete this area let's just click on this x to delete it now i wanna create our second section so click on this plus icon and here i'm taking this first structure this one and here i wanna give it a dark background color so go under style tab from here from the background type let's select the color and that would be hash 1a1f2b like i said it's kind of dark color and i want to add some spacing so go under advanced tab unlink the padding okay before unlinking it with the four sides i mean with the top right bottom and left i want to add 15 pixel of padding let's now unlink it because at the top i want to add 130 pixel and at the bottom i want to add 120 pixel of padding all right now within this container click on this plus icon here i'm dragging a heading element and you cannot see it because its color is black also the background color is black so here first of all i'm just going under the style tab and let's just make its color to white so you can see it properly let's now go under content tab because i want to make its alignment to centered and of course i want to change the text so here i'm just pasting some dummy content now underneath that i want to add some space so go under advanced tab just unlink the padding because at the bottom i want to add 40 pixel of padding then underneath this heading i want to take an inner container so click on this rubik's cube icon from here i'm dragging the container underneath this heading here in this place and you know within this container i want to take some inner or child containers so this would be the parent container of their child container so first of all as it's the parent so i'm making its direction to row and here within their child containers i don't wanna any gap so from here i'm setting the gap to zero instead of the default 20 pixel all right like i said within this parent container we will have some child containers so click on this plus icon here i'm dragging one child container inside here so like i said i don't want to make you confused just right click over here and if i open the navigator just have a look here in this place so here this is basically this parent container this area so here in this container i just want to rename it to our benefits area so here i'm just renaming it to benefits area or we can just say it benefits then within that here we can see this one is our heading and right after that we have taken another inner container so here we can just name it as inner container and within this inner container we have taken another container okay so let's say we can just name it to card container because we will be using them as cards so here 
just have a close look here i'm now at the card container so let's just right click over the card container and then click on duplicate so here we have got another card container and let's just right click over here and click on duplicate so here within this inner container we have got three card containers okay for the moment let's just close the navigator so i just want to start working with the middle one so i'm selecting the middle one and i want to change its background color now go under the style tab from here open the background type so i'm making the background color to white color also i want to add some space in between so go under advanced tab from here i'm adding 15 pixel not 15 50 pixel of padding inside here now within this card let's click on this plus icon here first i'm searching for icon so you know you can just search any widget within this search bar so here i'm just typing icon let's drag this icon within this place now if you want you can change this icon so here i'm just searching for people carry so this one let's select it and click on insert and instead of this default icon view from the view i just want to make it to stat like this now let's go under its style tab so here the icon color on the normal state i want to set the primary color as our global accent color this color and at this moment if you have a look if we hover on this icon the inside icon color is becoming kind of gray but i don't want that so just go under this hover state and you see the secondary color on hover i wanna set it let's set it from this color picker i just want to make it white so now have a look if i hover here nothing is changing this is exactly what i wanted and also you can control the icon size from this place so i just want to keep it to 40 i mean 40 pixel and then right under this icon i want to add some space so go under advanced tab from here unlink the margin because i just want to add 10 pixel of margin at the bottom all right now right under this icon i want to add a heading so click on the rubik's cube icon from here i'm just dragging this heading element here in this place let's first paste some text here within this field and i want to reduce the font size so let's just go under style tab but if you noticed you see this global style is already getting from the global settings we have just set like here you see the text color is now getting from the global primary color the typography is now getting from the global primary typography but i want to change it a little bit so in this moment we can just click on this pencil icon you see we can see the default clash display font we can see the default 48 pixel of font size we can see the default 500 font weight but here i just want to change its font size a little bit so here i'm making it to 24 pixel also i want to make it centered aligned so from under content tab here i'm making the alignment to centered now right underneath this heading i just want to add some text so here i'm dragging the text editor widget and here within this place i'm pasting some text now you know i just want to make it centered align so from under style tab i'm making the alignment to centered here this card looks perfect and now you know we can just duplicate it so if i hover over here let's just duplicate it and here i want to duplicate it one more time and i just want to delete the right and left container so you know if i just delete it from here we can accidentally delete its parent container so it's always safe to open the navigator so from the navigator let's just have a look this is the first empty container this is the second one and we can see accordingly so we just want to delete the first one this is empty like if i open it you see this is empty so i'm deleting this one right click over here click on delete also the last one this one is empty as well so right click over here and click on delete so here we have got these three cards but i want to make the first one and third one looks a bit different so here let's just select the third one here i want to change its background color to the same background color of its parent container so make sure you have selected the third one go under its style tab from here i'm changing its background color to hash 1a 1f 2b then from the navigator 
you see we are now working with the third container i mean the third card container so let's open it also let's select its heading because i wanna make its color to white color so from under style tab i'm making its color to white color and with the text editor so i'm selecting the text editor from navigator let's now go under style tab i'm also making its color to white color i just wanna do the same thing with the first card container so i'm selecting the first card container this one so i'm just moving the navigator to the right side you can see it properly you see i just wanna change its background color so go under the style tab from here i'm changing its background color to hash 1a 1f2b then let's open it and its heading color i'm just changing it to white color and its text editor color i mean the paragraph color i'm also changing it to kind of white color you see we have turned the bottom bar to the left side so it's not pure white it's white with a little bit of transparency so overall it looks good okay so here i'm just selecting the card container it's again and here i want to do another interesting thing so on the normal state its background color is kind of black but when we hover here i just want to change its color to white so let's go under hover and on background type i just want to make it white color so if we now hover here you see the background color is becoming white then i wanna make this transition duration to 0 0.5 so it would look more smooth so right now it's looking like it but if you notice you see when we are hovering over on this place the background color is becoming white and the heading and the paragraph color is also white so on the hover state we cannot see the heading and the paragraph properly but no worries i have the solution for you but before giving you that solution, let's do the same thing with the third card container. So I'm selecting the third card container and on the hover state, I'm making the background color to white color. Also here, I'm making the transition duration to 0 0.5. Now here, you see there is no option. We can change the heading and the paragraph color while we are hovering over this card. So in the built-in elementor there is no option but i have created some custom code for you now to apply the custom code you can just go under the style tab not the style tab you can just go under advanced tab then if you scroll down you can just open the custom css field but you see the custom css option is only available on elementor pro so it's asking for upgrading it but like I said in this tutorial, I just want to use Elementor free version. So there is another way to apply the custom CSS code. Okay. So first of all, let's now go back to our WordPress dashboard. And from here, let's hover on appearance from there. Let's go to theme customization option. So click on customize. Now from the theme customizer here, you see there is an option. It says additional CSS. So click on additional CSS and we will be adding some css snippet within this field and i already have written the css snippet all you need to do you can just go to jimfahaddigital.com and here if you scroll down you see it says card hover effect css so here you just need to select this color code actually you don't need this style tag here at the top also here at the bottom you don't need to add these tags you just need to copy everything within the this style tag so here I'm just copying from here and here I'm closing in this place actually if you select it in this way you might miss some characters from this place so the better way is you can just select this whole thing from this place so right click and let's just copy it now go inside the theme customizer here right click over this place and click on paste and now, like I said, we don't need this style beginning tag and the closing tag. So I'm removing this style closing tag from here. And also I'm removing the style opening tag from the beginning. So if we just click on this publish button, let's now go back inside Elementor page builder. For the moment, click on this update button. Otherwise, all this work will lost. So make sure you have just saved the page and then refresh it so here let's scroll down and have a look if we now hover on this curves actually 
nothing is changing we can see the previous problem here because we need to do one last thing with the right and left card we need to add a class name okay so let's just select the third card now let's go under its advanced tab and here you see is the option for adding css classes here i will be adding the class name and the class name would be info dash box so right after adding the info dash box class name now have a look if i remove the navigator and if i just hover over on the third card we can see the color is now black but with the first one we cannot see the heading and paragraph color is changing to black because let's just browse through the navigator and i'm selecting the first card container just go under its advanced tab here we also need to add the class name so you know the class name would be info dash box so we can now close the navigator now have a look if i just hover on the first card it's also getting these colors so now everything is working perfectly the way we want it and i now just want to change this icon and the heading so first i'm just replacing this text with learn from experts and let's change this icon with a people icon so here or we can search for a person icon so here i'm selecting this click on insert also with the third one let's change this heading so here i'm changing it with this and also let's change this icon with one user clock so here we can use this icon click on insert right now everything is looking perfect by the way if you wanna get the real view of the website you can just minimize the bar from left side so we can now see the real view so this curves are looking great the hover effects are really looking cool also here at the top we can see our beautiful banner area and we have also created this second area all right let's now open the bar from left side so let's now start with our third area it would be the features area so here click on this plus icon and here i'm taking this first structure and here the background color go to style tab from here i just want to take the background color to our global off white color this one and also let's add some padding so first of all i'm adding 15 pixel let's now unlink it because at the top here i'm adding 130 and at the bottom i'm adding 160 pixel of padding okay so now within this container i mean within this parent container i want to take two inner containers okay so here click on this rubik's cube icon here i'm just dragging a container here in this place first of all i'm making its direction to row and here i'm making the align items to centered you already know why we need to make the align items centered now within this container i wanna take two inner containers so click on this plus icon here i'm dragging this container here and let's just duplicate it and let me show you the structure so if i right click and open the navigator here we can see so first this parent container it would be the features container so this is the main parent container of this area and within that here we can just name it for example feature one we can name it and here this one this would be the left container and here this would be the right container so let's start with the left one first of all i'm making its content width to full width and here i'm just making its width to 55 percent so of course let's just select the right container i'm making its content width to full width and here i'm making it width to 45 percent like this so here first with the left container uh, let's just go to advanced tab and here first of all i'm just unlinking the padding because i wanna add some padding at the right side so here let's add 90 pixel of padding right so we are done with the structure let's just close the navigator now within this left container i wanna add some image click on this plus icon here i'm dragging the image let's select the image so go to upload files click on select files so from here i'm selecting this image and open it let's select it i just wanna make its alignment to left alignment 
and then I wanna add two more images here so you know we can just duplicate these two images or okay let's just delete it you know you can just click on this rubik's cube icon and here you can drag one image underneath here and again you can add another image here underneath so here this is the second image and this is the third image so let's select the second image first now let's select the image click on upload files and click on select files by the way actually we can upload all these images together because we will be needing these images later so here up front i'm just uploading all the images together so i have basically selected all the images click on open to upload them together so all the images have been uploaded i'm selecting this image as our second image and for the third image let's select it and for the third image i'm selecting this one let's select it okay so for the second image i'm selecting it let's go to under advanced tab you know we al we already have done the same method with these two images so you are already comfortable with that so we will be doing the same method here so let's select it from under advanced tab open the position and i'm making it absolute and let's select the horizontal orientation from right side and i'm making it to negative 40 and then the vertical orientation i just wanna make it from top to 30 pixel then let's select this third image the same thing we will do go under advanced tab make the position to absolute and here the horizontal orientation i wanna do the same from oops from right i'm just making it to negative 40 and from top let's make it 150 or we can increase a bit or okay let's just keep it 150 pixel and now within the right container let's first select this container here i just wanna do a few things we already have made the content to width to full width the width to 45 percent here i'm just making the gap between elements to 30 instead of default 20 and here let's add a few elements so click on this plus icon here i'm dragging the heading let's paste some text here right underneath let's add some paragraphs so here i'm dragging text editor widget and here i'm just pasting some text and underneath that i want to add some icon list so let's click on the rubik's cube icon and here i'm just searching for icon list here we go just drag this icon list here underneath and you know i just want to delete this too and i'm deleting this one let's just open it because here First of all, I want to change this icon with this check circle, this one. Let's insert it. And also, instead of this list item one, I'm pasting some text here. So at this point, if I just duplicate it by clicking here, let's duplicate it one more time. So we can do some styling with it. Now, just go under this style tab. Here, the space in between, I just want to increase it to 14 pixel and then let's open the icon because i wanna make the icons color to our default accent color also let's make their size a bit bigger like 18 pixel and then let's open the text option so here the text color i just wanna make it our primary color and the typography let's make its font size to okay 16 pixel is fine i just wanna make it a bit bold so i'm making the font weight to 600 and here i just wanna remove the text i mean here i'm just pasting some other text also let's change the content of the third list so this area is already looking great and here i just wanna open the navigator so from here this one is the feature one let's now minimize it and you know what I just want to duplicate the feature one container this one so right click over here and click on duplicate so you see it's been duplicated here and i want to rename it to just double click here i want to rename it to feature 2 and with this feature 2 i want to add some space at the top so go under advanced tab unlink the margin here at the top let's add 120 pixel of margin top like this and then within the feature 2 let's just expand it and here you see this is the left container and this is the right container i just want to switch it so i'm dragging this right container at the top of the left container like this so here left becomes right and right becomes left so i just wanna rename it so it should be 
left container oops it should be left container and this the second one it should be the right container okay now with the left container i just wanna replace this heading with some other heading text and then with this within this right container okay let's open this right container let's now go under its advanced tab now here i don't want any padding on the right side so i'm making the right padding value to zero but instead i want to add 90 pixel of padding to the left side and now here let's open the right container because we already have set the image position for the second and third so i'm selecting image two and three together or you can just select them one by one just right click over here and delete it also right click over here and delete the third one from here so first of all let's select the first image this one i want to replace it with other image so here i'm selecting this image let's click on select and right after that i want to add two more images okay for now we can just close the navigator so from this rubik's cube icon here i'm dragging the image underneath here also let's add another image widget right underneath this image here so here with the second image let's just select the image that would be this one let's select it and for the third one let's select the image that would be this one let's select it so here this one is the second image let's select it go under advanced tab i'm making the position to absolute so here we can say it and the horizontal position let's keep it zero but the vertical orientation from top let's make it to 114 pixel like this also with the third one let's select it now let's make its position to absolute now here from left we can make it to negative 30 pixel and from top we can make it to 200 or a bit more 215 yep it looks perfect so we have created this creative area really really fast because right now you are familiar with elementor page builder you are familiar with flex container so in this way we can create the next areas really really faster so here we will be creating the speakers area so click on this plus icon and here again i'm taking this container structure this one i just wanna make its background color to pure white color like this and then let's add some spacing so first of all i'm adding 15 pixel of padding unlink it at the top let's add 120 pixel and at the bottom let's just add 70 pixel of padding now here first click on this plus icon here i'm dragging the heading element i'm making the alignment to centered and here i'm pasting some text now let's go under advanced tab here unlink the margin i'm just adding the bottom margin to 40 pixel now here underneath this heading click on the rubik's cube icon here i'm dragging a container here and within this container i want to add some image box okay so first of all i'm making their direction to row based so here i want to add some image box click on this plus icon and here i'm searching for image box here we go let's just drag this image box inside here now first of all let's place an image here so i'm selecting this image let's now select it now here within this field i'm just putting the title or his name and here let's say he's a web developer so i'm putting the text web developer now i just want to duplicate this image box couple more times so you can understand it properly okay so here i'm just let's just duplicate it and here i'm duplicating it again let's duplicate it one more time now if i do the styling you can get it properly okay so first of all let's do some styling for this image so go under the style tab from here you can control the spacing like this but i'm making the spacing to 8 pixel you see it's working with this one because we are styling this specific image box now here only with the image i wanna add some border to the left and right only so here border type i'm making it to solid and here with let's just unlink it like i said i wanna add that only left and right side so here i'm making it to for the pixel to the right and for the pixel to the left then here i wanna make its color to white color just stay with me you can understand why i'm doing this so here also on the hover 
I just want to reduce its opacity a bit so it might be 0 0.9 then let's open the content content basically means this title and this text or description so first of all the title's typography i just want to reduce its font size so by default it's 48 i just want to make it to 24 pixel and then here i just want to add the title spacing to 5. okay for the moment we can just delete the other image boxes like this one let's delete this one as well so I'm deleting it so you can see it properly here in this place. Oops, this image is looking super small because we need to increase its width to 100% like this. Now here I wanna also add some margin bottom space. So let's select it, go under advanced tab here, unlink the margin. Here I'm adding 50 pixel of margin at the bottom because we may have more image boxes at the bottom so they will get some breathing space in between vertically, okay? All right, now let me show you one interesting thing. We have designed this image box, but this image box is not perfectly designed. But now I just want to duplicate this design from this place to this image box. Okay, but before that here I wanna show you another thing. I just want to add one hover effect so from under advanced tab let's open this transform option on hover I just want to skew it a little bit so from here let's open this skew option and on the skew x I just want to skew it a bit oops actually in normal state I just want to keep it the way it is so here let's just undo it on hover state let's open this skew option and here I just want to make it 0 0.5 or not 0 0.5 just keep it to 5 so in normal state we can see it like this but when you hover here you see it's skewing 5% it's looking really great so now have a look if I just want to get the style from here to this image box just right click over here click on copy and right click over here and click on paste style not paste just click on paste style you see they are now getting the same style on the same hover effects now here i want you to understand another thing so i just want to duplicate it couple more times so let's duplicate it and let's duplicate it one more time also let's duplicate it one more time now here i want to do i want to make each of their width to 20 percent and they're in between gap i want to make them six percent okay so first of all i'm just selecting their parent now from here gap first of all i'm making the option in percentage and let's make it to six percent and now let's select each of them so i'm selecting it go under advanced tab and their own width i'm just setting it to custom and let's make it to 20 percent so now I just want to do the same and you know we can just right click over here copy it now right click over here and click on paste style also with this one right click over here click on paste style same with this one also with the last one now if I duplicate them couple more time you see there is one problem their own width is 20% but still they are staying in the same line because their parents by default wrap value is set to no wrap if i just click over their parent container just go under its layout tab and you see their default value wrap value is set to no wrap but instead if i set the value to wrap now they are getting their own 20 percent width like this you may think if each of their width is 20 percent then there should be five at the top because five times 20 equal 100 percent but you see we have also given their gap between elements to 6%. That's why we have 4 elements at the same row. Now let me show you another interesting thing which is justify content here at the left side. So here if I set the justify content to center you see they are now all centered aligned. If I set it to the flex end they are all now right aligned. But I want them to the space around. So here I'm just setting the option to space around. So here first one go to the left, last one go to the right and in between they have shared all the in between spaces. So if you want to keep here six members or six speakers you can do that. But here I want to add one more. So it's now looking like it. 
and you know you can change all these images text very very easily for example i'm selecting this one let's just go under content tab here select the image and let's say i just want to use this image click on select and here i also want to change his name so here i'm just pasting another name you see it's instantly changed so in the same way i'm changing all other images and their names really quickly and i'm coming back to you I have changed all their images and names so we are also done with this speakers area let's now create our next section which will be our faq area so let's now click on this plus icon and i'm taking this first column based structure and here i want to set the background color to the global off-white color this one let's add some spacing so first i'm adding 15 pixel of padding let's now unlink it because at the top I want to add 120 and at the bottom I want to add 130 pixel of padding now here first I want to add a heading widget so click on this plus icon here I'm dragging the heading let's make the alignment to centered and let's go under advanced tab I want to add some margin at the bottom let's add 40 pixel and here let's go under content tab I just want it to say frequently asked questions but here I want to make these questions into a separated line so to add the line break here I'm adding a code which is br tag so here is the start tag or the beginning tag here is the end tag in between I'm just writing or typing br so this br is breaking these two words I mean it's breaking them to the two different lines Alright, now underneath here I want to add an accordion widget. So click on the Rubik's Cube icon here. I'm searching for accordion. This one, let's drag this accordion underneath this heading here. So first of all here we can see two items. Okay, let's just delete one because I want to start with this one. Let's paste some dummy title here. And also I'm pasting some dummy description here. Okay. So let's now just duplicate it couple more time to make it look real. Now here the first thing I want to do you see the opening icon and the closing icon I want to change them. So from this place click on this icon library. So here for the opening I just want to use the plus icon. Actually not inside recommended let's go inside all icons. And here I want to use this plus icon let's click on insert and here for the active icon let's go inside icon library go to all icons here i'm just searching for minus so this one minus circle i'm selecting it click on insert now let's do some styling with it because right now you see the titles are looking super big now go under style tab first of all i want to add one pixel of border and here i'm making the border color to our primary black color let's open the title settings i mean titles is styling so here i'm making the titles color to primary color it's already getting the primary color but on the active color i also want to make it to our primary color and from typography let's just reduce its font size so instead of 48 let's just make it to 24 pixel right now it looks decent then let's style the icon a bit so from here let's open the icon now let's make the icons color to our accent color and space i just wanna make it a bit okay let's just make it to five and now let's open the content content means this paragraph so first of all i wanna add some breathing space so here i'm adding 24 pixel of padding let's just unlink it because at the left i wanna add more so maybe 50 pixel would be great yep Right now, all the designs are looking perfectly fine. I just want to replace this heading with some other dummy heading. So it would look like some real life FAQs. Just go under content tab and here I'm changing this text with other text. So yeah, I have changed all the titles text. Now here with this accordion, I just want to reduce their width. So go under advanced tab from here let's set the width to custom and here i just want to make its width to 80 percent and i want to make it centered so from here align self let's make it to centered so if we just minimize the bar from left side it's now looking great so yep accordion is working perfectly 
let's now open the bar and let's create our next area so here okay we haven't renamed this area's name so let's just open the navigator because personally i love to work in a decorated way so open the navigator let's just minimize them all together and have a look so here we have created our features area and then right after that this area is our speakers area so here i'm just renaming it to speakers and right after that we have created our faq area so here i'm just renaming it to faq all right let's close it and now i want to create our call to action area so click on this plus icon and here i'm taking this two container structure this one and i want to give it a dark background but first of all here i just want to make the align items to centered like this now let's add the background color go under the style tab from here the background color would be hash 1a1f2b also with this i want to add an image so you can add that image as overlay also you can add that image in the background because it's a transparent image so it doesn't matter let's just click over this image and for the overlay i'm selecting this image let's now select it and you know i just want to set its position to top right like the banners one and here repeat value i'm making it to no repeat then you know like all other areas i want to add some padding so here i'm adding 15 pixel of padding let's now unlink it at the top let's add here 130 and at the bottom also i'm adding 130 pixel of padding now within the left container click on this plus icon here i'm dragging a heading i just want to make its color to white color and you know i just want to replace the text with a real text and underneath that here i want to add a paragraph let's paste here some dummy text and here i also want to make its color to white color and you see it's a bit transparent now right after this paragraph click on the rubik's cube icon here i'm dragging an inner container in this place I just want to make its direction to row based and here i'm setting the gap between elements to 40 pixel now here within this place click on this plus icon here i want to add a counter widget so this one let's drag it here so first of all i want it to say total registered so here i'm just writing total and then here i'm just writing registered then here the ending number i just wanted to say for example 643 actually you cannot see it because we need to do some styling with it so let's go under the style tab from here the number color let's make its color to our accent color so right now we can see it and then this title is looking super big so open the title now i want to make its color to white color and then i really want to reduce its font size so from the typography let's make its size to 16 pixel all right now i just want to duplicate this counter widget so let's duplicate it and here instead of this huge number i just wanted to make the ending number to two and here you can add any suffix so here i just want to add a plus symbol so you can see the plus symbol right after two if you want you can add the prefix so at the beginning here for example here i'm adding one just i'm just adding here one like this so here before this two number this one prefix will be added all the time but i don't want that so i'm just keeping it empty so it will be shown like two plus and here instead of total registered i want it to say hours per session and also here is a typo so here oops here i just wanted to say total registered all right now here i wanna do another thing so let's just select the left container i wanna make its width to 45 percent so the right container its width would be 55 percent and i want to add some margin at the left side so go under advanced tab from here unlink the margin at the left i'm adding just 50 pixel of margin 
now here within the right container i just wanna add a video okay so let's click on this plus icon and here i'm dragging this video widget here inside so basically here you can put any youtube video or there are more options like here you can add any vimeo or daily motion or even you can add here your self-hosted video okay so if you want to add any youtube or vimeo or any online video you just need to put that link within the link field but here i want to use a self-hosted video so from here i'm selecting self-hosted and here i just want to upload the file so let's click on choose video and here is the video i already have uploaded so i'm selecting the mp4 formatted video now click on select and here we can see the video by the way also we can see the options like video controls here but i don't want that so for that reason i'm just disabling the player controls option from this place and i want to turn on the auto play i want to turn on the play on mobile i want to turn on the mute because i don't want the visitors get scared with the sound of the video so i'm just making it to mute also i want this video to be played on loop so i'm turning on the loop from this place by the way there is another option if you want you can add any poster here so there might be any device where video is not supported so instead of this video they can see this poster on their browser or on their device all right now just underneath this video i want to add a button and i don't want to design the button from scratch because you may remember we have created one button at the banner i mean within the banner so we can just right click over here let's just copy this button from this place let's scroll down and here put your cursor here underneath the video right click here and click on paste actually it's not pasted on the proper area that's because we need navigator some time so here if i open the navigator we can see what's went wrong here okay so let's just right click over here open the navigator so here right after faq this area this is basically our cta area so i'm renaming it to cta and then here this container this is basically our left container and this container this is basically oops this is the inner container so this inner container is within left container so you can see it properly so here i'm just renaming it to inner container it's within left container so i'm minimizing left container and here this container this is basically our right container okay and you see the button is went outside of the right container so if i minimize it you see within the cta container the left container right container and button container they becomes three siblings but i don't want that i want this button within the right container for that reason i'm opening the right container and let's drag this button right underneath this video here right now it looks perfect so i have selected the button let's select the button here and i'm making the alignment to centered so if i now close the navigator you can see it properly all right so we are almost done with our landing page we just need to create the header and footer of the landing page so here first i want to show you how to create the footer of our page because it's very important if you know how to create a footer on a landing page you can create any website's footer area so let's first click on this plus icon you are already familiar with all these so i'm selecting this structure also i'm making its background color to our global off-white color and let's add some padding so here at the top and bottom i'm just adding 120 pixel and at the, oops 120 pixel and at the bottom i'm just adding 30 pixel of padding now here within this area let's click on the rubik's cube icon here i'm dragging one container and you know its direction would be row based then within this container click on the plus icon here i'm um, dragging another inner container area let's just duplicate it so you can understand it properly okay now within this inner container click on the plus icon first i'm dragging an heading element so let's say it's just saying links and now go inside the style tab here i just wanna make its font size to for example 18 pixel and let's make the font size 
to enter. Also, I'm making weight a bit bolder, 600. Now, underneath this heading here, I'm searching for icon list. So here, let's drag this icon list underneath of this heading here in this place. Now here, let's just delete these two. And here, I don't want icons with this, so I'm just deleting it. And here, all these will be links for different pages, like if you have privacy policy or disclaimer page. So here, I'm just putting a dummy hashtag within the link field. You can add any real link within these fields. So for example, let's say it says it's your disclaimer page. So here, I'm just writing disclaimer. Now let's just duplicate it couple more time. So for example, it might be your refund policy. Next one might be support pages link. Then the fourth one it might be your request a quote pages link. So here let's just style this icon list. So let's go under style tab. First here I'm making this space between to let's make it 12 pixel. And here we don't need to do anything with icon because we don't have icon here. So open the text. Here we can make this text color. So color is here. So we can make the text color to our primary color. And typography we can just make it to our text. Okay, we can just keep it like this. And actually I just wanna add a bit of space at the top. So go under advanced tab, let's unlink the margin. At the top I'm just adding five pixel of margin. All right, let's now just duplicate this container. Duplicate it one more time and here I'm duplicating it one last time. And you know, we can just delete this empty container and I'm just opening the navigator so we can understand the structure properly. So here, this one, this is basically our footer and then within the footer this one is the inner parent container so we can just name it to inner container and within this inner container oops within this inner container we have all these single containers but the very first one this one is the empty one so i'm just right clicking here and let's delete it so we have got here one two three and four inner containers all right, now underneath this container, I wanna add a divider, okay? So I wanna add the divider underneath this inner container. So let's minimize it. I wanna add the divider right underneath here, okay? So let's just click on the Rubik's Cube icon and here I'm just searching for divider. So here I'm dragging the divider right underneath the inner container here. You see, I cannot properly drop it anywhere because it's going inside of the inner containers. Okay, I'm just dropping it here. We can fix it later. So you see, ju it's just went inside of one child container, but I wanna drag it to the top of them. So here in this place. Actually, we can just move this divider to the top of the inner container here. And then let's minimize this inner container and we can drag this inner container at the top of the divider here in this place. So right after doing all this, we can see the divider here underneath. Okay, let's change the color of this divider. So go under the style tab. From here, we can keep its color to black, but I just wanna reduce its opacity a bit. So let's just keep it like this. And also I wanna add some margin at the top. So let's go under advanced tab, unlink the margin. At the top I'm adding 30 pixel of margin. Now here underneath this divider, I wanna add another inner container. So drag this container here underneath this divider. Let's make its direction to row also. Here I'm making the justify content to space between. So this option. Now here click on the plus icon. First of all, I'm dragging the text editor widget here. Now within this place here, I'm just pasting some text. So it says Jim for the digital all rights reserved. You can write the exact year, your company name, you know, all the copyright stuff. And then right after that, let's click on the Rubik's Cube icon. Here I'm searching for social icons. So here is the social icons widget. Now let's drag it right after this text here in this place. You see it's placed to the right side. The reason is if I select this parent container, 
you see i have set the justify content to space between if i have set it to centered so they both will come together to the centered place but i want to keep it to space between so it's looking like it all right let's now select the social icons and from here if you want you can add more social items like if i click here on add items just click on this icon you can add your any other social media handles for example if you have your linkedin so you can just search here for linkedin so here i'm selecting linkedin so you can put your linkedin profile link here within this link field okay so now let's let's just do some styling let's go under style tab i want to make the color to custom color and here the primary color i want to make the primary color to a transparent color so open the color picker and drag this bar to the left side so it's become transparent and the secondary color i want to make it our primary color so here secondary color i'm making it our primary color okay and also i want to make it a bit smaller so we can make the size something like 20 pixel right now it looks perfect so for the moment let's close the navigator and i'm just quickly replacing all this same text with some other text all right so we are done with our footer let's now create our header okay so let's just scroll up and you know if you want to create any container or section at the top of any section you just need to click here on this plus icon so here i'm clicking on this plus icon and let's now click on this plus icon and i'm taking this row based container this one now here you know i just want to make the align items to centered and first i'm making its background color to transparent color so just open the color picker and i'm making it completely transparent then i want to add some padding with the header so go under advanced tab first of all here i'm adding 15 pixel of padding now let's unlink it because at the top and bottom i want to add 20 pixel of padding now first i want to add my logo okay so click on the plus icon let's drag an image and here i want to set my logo so it would be this one let's select it click on select first of all i want to make the alignment to left now let's go under the style tab because i just want to make it so within pixel let's make it to 80 pixel now i want to create a navigation menu here so we need to create that from our wordpress dashboard so let's just go back to our wordpress dashboard and from appearance let's now click on menus and here you can give it any name i'm just naming it webby menu and here display location i'm setting the header now click on create menu so here within this menu i wanna add four items and i wanna use the custom links so we can add the urls later for the moment i'm just putting here hashtag and here the first one would be benefits okay let's click on add to menu and then let's add another one and it should say speakers add to menu and here i want it to say faq click on add to menu and here the last one i want it to say booking click on add to menu all right so for so good just click on save menu to save this menu and also if you want to display the navigation menu here we need to install another plugin for that so let's go back to wordpress dashboard now from plugins let's click on add new and here i'm searching for elementor header and footer builder now here is the plugin it says elementor header and footer builder and it's by brainstorm force and nikhil shavan so let's just click on install now and then click on activate all right we can now go inside elementor page builder by the way whatever we have done here to save it just click on this update button and then let's refresh our builder so here is our header let's now go inside of it and now right after our logo here i'm searching for menu so here we need to select this one it says navigation menu and at the top you see here is a tiny note it says hfb so header footer builder 
okay so here i'm just dragging over here in this place so now we can see the menu in this place of course i will design it later but for now i want to show you another thing so here my main goal is whenever you will click on this benefits that will jump you to this benefits area whenever you will click on these speakers that will take you to this speakers area here if you click on this booking that will take you to this booking area here so it says jump buttons and to make it happen we need to add some ids with the section so for example if you want to link these benefits with this benefit area so let's select this benefits container this one now let's go under its advanced tab and here with css ids i'm naming it benefits now i'm just copying this css id name let's now go inside wordpress admin panel here let's now go to appearance to menus and here is our web menu just open the custom link for benefits and here just with the hashtag paste the id name so it would be hashtag benefits so similarly let's go inside elementor page builder the next one would be for this section so it's our speaker section let's select this container go under advanced tab here i'm adding a css id name that would be speakers now let's just copy this id name go inside menus and here open the speakers custom link here with the hashtag i'm just pasting speakers okay so similarly with the faq go inside elementor so this one is the faq area go under its advanced tab here i'm adding the css id to faq also here i'm adding the custom link to hash faq also with the booking here i'm just adding hash booking and we need to add the same css id with this booking area so select this container go under advanced tab from here the css id would be booking okay so let's now click on this update button to save this work by the way don't forget to save your menu after updating the link so from here from the menus click on save menu and just after saving the menu go back inside elementor here if i now refresh the page just have a look now if i click on speakers that jumps us to the speakers area if from top if i click on booking it takes us to the booking area instantly so this is how jump button works and like i said i will of course design these nav menus actually i will make it a hamburger but before that on the right side i want to add a button okay so you know we can just copy this button from here let's copy it and here right after this just right click here and click on paste now i just wanted to say let's get started and also i just want to reverse the color so let's select this button go under the style tab here on the normal state i want to make its color to our primary color and on hover state I want to make the background color to our accent color so in normally it's now black color and on hover it's now getting our accent color also here at the left I want to add some margin with this button so go under advanced tab unlink the margin at the left I just want to add 15 pixel of margin all right now like I said I want to make it as a fly out menu so first of all let's select this menu now let's open the layout so by default the layout is set to horizontal but i want to set it as flyout and also i want to align the hamburger from right side and here i want to do another interesting thing like here if i select their parent heading container i mean parent header container this one you see if i just make the justify content to centered all them will be centered together if i make them space between the first and last will go to the left and right and the middle one will keep at the center but i don't want to do anything with the justify content so i'm just removing a space between i just want to keep the element the way they were so i'm just selecting the middle one let's go under its advanced tab i just want to make its size to grow so it basically will make the first and last elements to the left and right 
and as we have made this element size to grow so it will take up all the in between spaces now have a look if i just click on this hamburger icon we can see the menu items at the left side so from here if i click on speakers that jumps us to the speakers area also from top let's open the flyout menu now you see their size is too big so we can reduce their size so from here go under style tab then from here from the typography you know we can just reduce their font size so i'm making them 24 pixel so if i now open up the flyout menu you see the size is now looking perfect all right let's now close it and here i wanna make it a transparent menu if you notice okay let's just right click over here and i'm opening it in navigator so here it's at the top of our hero banner first of all i'm just renaming it to our header so you already know we have given a transparent color with this header and now i want to place it at the top of our hero banner so first of all i will be selecting our hero banner which means this area and i will be adding some negative margin at the top of this hero banner okay so let's go under advanced tab now let's unlink the margin and here at the top and i will be adding the negative margin as long it takes okay so i start taking the negative margin so it's now going to the top let's see what it takes so it's negative 90 pixel margin at the top and now let's select the header we cannot see the header because it's now under the hero banner so we need to increase the z index value of this header just select the header from navigator now go under advanced tab from here i'm making the z index value to 5 now this header is at the top of the hero banner so we can see it properly all right to save our work click on this update button and for the moment we can close the navigator our whole landing page is now looking great so all the areas design is looking modern clean now we just need to check the very last thing which is the responsiveness of the website so to check the responsiveness of the landing page you can just click here at the very left bottom side it says responsive mode just click there and at the top we can see the desktop screen right now so at desktop screen it's looking great now let's check it on tablet view so here i'm clicking on tablet portrait mode so here the header is looking great but within the banner everything is looking great but i think we just need to reduce the font size of this heading so let's select it and from under style tab let's open the typography here i want to make its font size to 60 pixel also we can reduce the line height to 50 not em let's set it 50 pixel or you can reduce it more like 40 pixel oops let's just increase a little bit I think we can set it as 60 pixel or let's increase it to 70 pixel so right now it's looking perfect so on the tablet device everything is looking great so all these areas nothing is broken I'm personally happy with it so here we can at least see everything perfectly without breaking any areas so on the tablet device everything is looking so far great now lastly we just need to check how it's looking from mobile device because the mobile device view is really important because more than 50 percent of the visitors actually come from mobile device so to check how it's looking on mobile device let's just click on this mobile portrait icon okay here i wanna do the first thing here with this button so on the mobile device i only wanna display this logo and this hamburger icon i don't want to display this menu on the mobile device okay so i'm selecting this menu item here let's go under its advanced tab and from here let's scroll down and i'm opening the responsive view so i want to hide it from mobile device so it says hide on mobile portrait so i'm hiding it and you see you can still see the button here but if you wanna check the real view actually you cannot see this button from real mobile view so if you wanna enable the real mobile view all you need to do just click on this hamburger icon click on user preferences and from here you see it says responsive preview you just need to turn off hidden elements so if i turn off the hidden elements 
you can now see the real view of mobile device so it's looking perfect by the way i'm opening the navigator so it would be easier for you to understand so here i have selected hero banner and you see on the hero banner we have added huge padding on the desktop view but for mobile view i want to reduce the padding okay so first of all i'm adding 15 to all around let's now unlink it now only for the mobile device at the top I want to add 160 pixel and at the bottom I want to add only 60 pixel of padding then with this heading let's select it go under its style tab open the typography only for the mobile device I want to reduce its font size to 48 pixel also let's reduce the line height to 60 pixel so whenever you see this little tiny mobile icon you will understand it's applicable only for the mobile device your tablet size and desktop size will remain the same so here this hero banner area is looking great also let's check if the hamburger is working perfectly let's click there yep the hamburger menu is working perfectly so you can close it let's now scroll down the whole banner area is looking perfect let's now scroll down here actually we need to do some work with these headings because these headings are looking so big but you see here is one heading if we scroll down here we have got another heading so if we want to reduce the font size of this heading together you know we can do that globally okay so to do it let's just click on this hamburger icon now click on site settings let's go inside global fonts and here is the primary font let's click there now only for the mobile device we are setting the font size to 42 pixel you see they are all getting 42 pixel together so for the moment let's just click on update and close the site settings so here with this container only for the mobile device go under advanced tab i also want to reduce their padding so first i'm applying 15 now unlink it at the top and bottom i'm adding 60 pixel of padding so actually we can apply this padding with all other areas like here if i scroll down let's select this area go under advanced tab here first i'm adding 15 now here let's just unlink it at the top i'm adding 60 pixel but at the bottom here actually we need more space so here at the bottom i'm adding 200 pixel of padding so right now at the bottom it's looking great but now in between these two I think this space is huge so from here I'm selecting this container actually we need to select their parent container because you see the left container has been selected we need to select the feature 2 container this one now go under its advanced tab and I just wanna reduce the top margin so I'm unlinking it and at the top let's add 60 pixel of margin also here let's scroll up i think we can add some space at the top of this heading so here i'm just selecting this heading go under its advanced tab unlink the margin at the top here i'm adding 60 pixel of margin so far just have a look from top so everything is looking so far great the features area is looking great here we need to work with this speakers area so first of all let's select their container go under advanced tab here you know we can just add the padding value to 15 now unlink it at the top and bottom i want to add 60 pixel of padding and then with each of this image box you may remember on the desktop and tablet we have given their width to 20 percent but now i just want to make their width to 100 percent so i'm selecting the first one go under advanced tab from here i'm just making its width to full width and then i just wanna copy and paste the style so i'm copying it let's now right click here and then click on paste style so i'm just doing the same with all other speakers area so let's just right click over here paste style let's now do the same with this one also with this one also with the last one i'm just clicking on paste style then right after that here we have got the faq area so first of all let's just fix its padding like other areas so here at the top and bottom i'm just adding 60 pixel of padding and also with this accordion area let's just select it go under advanced tab 
only for the mobile device i'm making its width to 100 percent so right now it's also looking great on mobile devices then with the city area let's fix their padding for mobile devices so similar thing we have already done it so many times so at the top it's 60 oops 60 and at the bottom it's 60 pixel and then you may remember we have added some space at the left side with this container on desktop but on mobile device you don't need that so just select this container go under advanced tab and here i'm making the merge into zero first now unlink it because i just want to add some space at the top so here at the top i'm adding 60 pixel of margin okay so right now this area is looking perfect and with the footer i just want to fix the padding so 15 pixel first with all together unlink it at the top here i'm adding 60 and here bottom i'm adding 60 pixel of padding so if i now minimize it just have a look so footer is now looking great just have a final look everything is now looking great on the mobile device also we have checked everything is looking great on the tablet view and if we go back to desktop everything is already looking great here so let's just close the responsive bar from top let's open the bar from left side and finally as we have checked everything on responsive view so let's just click on this update button to save this page and now if you want to see this page on real browser without the elementor page builder so you can just click on this hamburger icon and you can click on this view page so i'm opening it from a new tab so here we can see our final page if you like it please give this video a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this youtube channel also please let me know your opinion in the comment section also don't forget to share this video with your friends I wish you all the best, I will see you in the next video. For now, bye bye.